This is my 12 week old micro paludarium. Before I show you how well it's doing and some of the micro bugs living inside, let me take you back three months ago to when I made it. I built the mini tank from scratch out of glass from picture frames. I used a ruler to mark the dimensions and then used a glass cutter to cut them to size. These small pieces of glass are super easy to cut. Once all the pieces were cut out, I used some electrical tape to do a test fit. They all fit together perfectly, so it was time to remove the sharp edges. This was easily done with some sandpaper. After the glass was sanded and dried, I used some tape to outline the edges. This helps create much cleaner and neater joints. I then placed everything in the correct position and then went on to add the silicone. As this tank's so small, I used a small syringe to make this easier. I laid a thin bead of silicone along the edges of the glass and then went on to carefully assemble the tank. At this point, it's important to work fast whilst trying your best not to rush. I then used a small rounded stick to remove any excess silicone in the joints. I then placed on the last piece and then went on to carefully removing the tape. It's important to do this whilst the silicone is still wet. 24 hours later and the silicone had completely dried. At this point, I removed the electrical tape and then went on to use a razor blade to clean up any of the edges. The result was a clean and neat micro tank. Before continuing, I'd done a quick water test to make sure there was no leaks. It was all good, so it was time to start making the paludarium. I started by taking some tree fern panel and cutting it to size. I then cut it in half so it would fit inside a little better. I then wanted to cover it in moss. I attached some thread to the tree fern panel and then wrapped it around the moss to hold it in place. I then gave it a good spray down. I wanted to add a little more detail, so I took some twigs and trimmed them down with some pliers. I wanted them to look like tree roots growing down over the moss. Next I planted some climbing plants. I used some tweezers to carefully wedge them in place underneath the twigs. I then went on to make a retaining wall out of slate stone. I used super glue to join all the pieces together, waited for it to dry and then placed it inside the paludarium. Next I placed in the substrate, for this I used aqua soil. Then it was time to place the background inside the paludarium. I went on to add a few patches of moss sitting on the retaining wall. For the foreground of the water section, I poured in a thin layer of sand followed by some crushed slate stone to create a more natural look. I then filled up the water section and went on to give the glass a clean. I then placed some duckweed on the water, added some springtails and the micro paludarium was complete. As you can see, 12 weeks later and this micro paludarium has completely transformed. I haven't had any problems at all with this setup and haven't done any maintenance other than filling the water up every now and then. All the moss and plants have adjusted really well and have been growing great. And the hydrocotyl has even found its way behind the background. The duckweed has done a good job at covering most of the water. The ficus quercifolia has rooted to the background and has got some new growth towards the top. It's quite hard to see under all the other plants and moss. The Peperomia amarginella has been growing great. As you can see, it's got these beautiful miniature turtle back leaves. What looks to be like some grass or weeds has sprouted from the moss and is growing out the top. I'm not the biggest fan of how they look, so I simply pulled them out. Now I'm gonna do a little more maintenance inside the paludarium. I start by trimming the moss at the base of the tank. It has been growing really well, but it's starting to take over a little bit. I trim it with some long scissors and then carefully pull it out with tweezers. I'll put an Amazon link to these tools in the description as they're super useful. It's looking a lot better, but I feel like it's a little empty right in the corner. To solve this, I took the moss I just pulled out, trimmed it up and then placed it back in the corner. This will help create some denser growth that isn't as leggy and stretched out as it was before. Next, I'm gonna pull out some of the hydrocotyl that's grown towards the back. Trimming plants in a terrarium can quite often be difficult as you've been watching them grow for so long. But by trimming them, you can help maintain a tidier looking scape and also it will help promote new growth which is often denser than it was before. After trimming some of the climbing plants, I then went on to trimming the hypnum moss in the background. I actually found the hypnum moss in my back garden and I wasn't sure how it would do in a paludarium setup, but as you can see, it's done great. I won't be throwing away these cuttings as I can use them in another terrarium or paludarium. As the paludarium had been open for a little while, I gave it a light spray down and then went on to clean the glass as there was a little bit of algae growth. One of the reasons why this mini paludarium has been so successful is due to these tiny bugs called springtails. They've been working hard eating any mold or decaying matter inside the tank. 
I did only seed the tank with just a few, but their population has exploded, which is great to see. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this one, where I show you how to make a nano dragonstone paludarium.